Welcome everybody, this is Brother Mutant here. Today we continue our quest to make another Arcane Bloodline pick that's going to mimic or mirror or be better than another Bloodline pick for the Elder Scion. Well, what have we done so far? Let's see, we've done the Dragon Disciple slash Draconic Bloodline already. I have one in the can already for the uh, Air Elemental that's coming soon, but I'm not finished with it yet. We've done the Undead one, and that was a Beam Caster, if I remember correctly, right? Uh, that was an awesome, fun one to do. Let's actually do another strength one, shall we? Let's get into it. So, here is what we have. A Fallen Angel. We have gone Asimer for a reason. I'll show you that here in a moment. Uh, we are directly competing with the Abyssal Bloodline. So, the Abyssal Bloodline is going to beat us out when it comes to strength. There's just nothing we can do about that. They get a plus six for free. Plus two, plus four, then plus six by the end of the build. Or actually, probably somewhere in the middle of the build. The point is... We can't compete with that. There's no way we can compete with that. But what can we do? We can still be a strength-based character, and we can still have high, high charisma, so there's no reason not to do that still. Just because we're subpar in that one area doesn't mean we can't make up for it in other ways. So I think we're okay. We went Lawful Evil, hence the Fallen Angel idea for the Asimer makes sense. Again, we are competing with a demon, after all. Uh, we are still, of course, arcane. Because uh, of our centipede familiar, I can take a penalty to my wisdom. We've done this before. A minus two uh, over here in the wisdom screws us on only two things that we really care about. One is perception and the other is will saves. Well, that's a good way to get plus two back is by having a centipede familiar. You don't even have to have the little creepy crawly out and that little bastard creeps me out so I don't want to have him out. But at least I get those back and that allows me to get my strength to an 18 as well as keep my charisma at a solid 19. Now I'll put all five points into charisma so that they have no choice but to be the best DC check and bastard that I can be, which is part of what being an arcane bloodline is, in my opinion. So, the question is, is what school then are we going to focus on? Are we going to dip into one and then get something completely different here? Or are we going to maximize a specific school? Now, I have thought about that long and hard. I was going to do an evoker build, evoker fire being an obvious choice. If you're going up against demons or devils, fire kind of is the first thing that comes to mind. And of course, so does damage, hence evocation. Free spells that you can get from level 1 all the way to 20 doing that too. So it's kind of a nice combo. But it's kind of flavor of the month, and you've seen that shit before. Plus... You haven't seen it yet, but the Air Elemental build that I'm making as a direct competitor is going to be an Evoker Electric. And again, I don't like rehashing the same thing if I can help it. So, since Fire still makes a staple in this build, I figure, what the hell, let's do that Transmutator Fire build that I always wanted to do. The reason for this is there's two Transmutation spells that we can get as we level up with our free picks. Here uh, will be the earliest one. And then here could be the next one, or we can wait till 19, which is probably what I'm going to do for that second one. But that's uh, Obsidian Flow and Tar Pool. Those are not only transmutation spells with a DC check, but they are also fire damaging spells, and therefore Elemental Focus Fire and Greater Elemental Focus Fire will benefit them as well. That means, with this being transmutation, going Spell Focus and Greater Spell Focus for transmutation, I can have a 4 to any transmutation spell. 6 for those two because of the fire bonuses. 8 if we're talking about having the toggle on once we get to level 20, which you know we're going to do that. And of course for at least the early one, the um, Obsidian Flow, it's low enough that we can actually probably slap a uh, Meta Magic feat on it and increase the plus 1 DC. So again, 2, 4, 6, 8 to possibly plus 9 for that one spell for the DC check. And that's freaking huge. I think this is going to be a solid, solid build. So. Again, Strength 18, Dex 12, Con 12, Intelligence 12, Wisdom 7, Charisma 19 at the start. The first feat we picked is Arcane Strike. Remember, we only get one because we are not human. We went Angel Kin. Let's actually show you that first. Remember, it also gives us a Light Halo, which you'll always have on, because it gives you a nice plus two to saves against Blinded and Dazzled effects. Not amazing, but it's free, and hey, I'll take that. And since you are on a team, this is not a solo character ever, 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 in my opinion. Take a team with you, at least four of you, if not the full team of six. And you'll be either the tank, or the, at least early on the off tank. And then you'll be the tank when you get to your uh, medium armor, I'd say. That's when you finally officially take over the role as being the, the main uh, spear or focal point of the team. Uh, but we also get Celestial Resistances, so some added protection, another reason to go Asimer. Uh, plus five for resistance for Acid, Cold, and Electric. Different than a Tiefling in that instead of uh, Acid, they get Fire. But, while I would have loved that, Tieflings don't get Wings, and therefore, this is the reason we want Asimer. One of the one of the main reasons, though. Those Wings at level 10 or higher, you can actually pick them as a feat choice, which means we will get them at 11, which is the soonest we can grab them. 
that thing makes you immune to all kinds of the ground-based effects that we're going to cast on the ground, a lot of which are transmutation spells, one of which is not, but still you'll be immune to it. And again, definitely good combo for you. Also, it gives you plus three to your dodge uh, for melee attacks, so again, always be on once you have them. So again, an extra bump to your armor class. As nice as it is to say, you will be tough, you will not be solo because your touch armor class is going to suck wind. So know that you're not going to be a soloer on this build. That's okay. Not everything should go solo. But we are going to get a really, really amazing DC check on this build, as I'm going to show you. Now, we went Angel Ken for the obvious plus two to strength, plus two to charisma. We get a bonus to lore religion. We don't care. We're not going to invest in it. Use Magic Device gets another plus two, and while that's nice and we'll take it, it could either mean that our Use Magic Device check will be a lot better than normal, or we could uh, just kind of save a couple of points, which is what we're going to do, and put it somewhere where it's useful. I don't need Use Magic Device to be greater than plus 15 by the end of the build. We'll have ways to buff it besides that. I'm not worried about that. But by and large, uh, I could use it in other places. So again, we'll shuffle points around. Lesser Restoration, a free spell once a day. A decent spell, not an amazing spell, but a free spell. We'll take it, and it will help out so that the cleric doesn't have to have this slotted all the damn time on the off chance that someone takes some penalty to the, one of their ability scores. We have the ability to do it. Poof, there you go, problem solved. And if we need more, we'll just rest up and, and use it again. So again, we'll be fine. But it does come in handy, and again, if anything, it saves on lesser restoration potions, so eh, what the hell, it's free. More useful, in my opinion, by the way, on a solo build. So if you went Monk for a build that had Asimer, this would be the kind of Asimer I'd like to be because of the Lesser Restoration. But again, on you. We're not doing that route today. So let's actually get into leveling this guy up, shall we? Gal, excuse me. Uh, from here, again, we're going straight Magus all the way. Uh, just quickly, Athletics, we're now going to put more than one point in it. We've already got it there. We have one point in Perception and one in Persuasion at the start. Okay. Our intelligence is not the greatest, and again, you're not human, so you don't get extra skill points. Intelligence is not going up in any way besides gear, so we're not going to have any more than two or three points to put in at any given time. Perception always has to go up. Know that. Also know that persuasion needs to get to six sooner than later. Why? Because at level seven, when we need it, we need it for a feat. I'll show you that when we get there. But we can kind of fall behind at least once, and this is the one chance you can fall behind on persuasion. So what am I going to do? Put it in Use Magic Device? Not a bad idea. You need to unlock it to use it. Same with Arcana. You need to unlock it to use it. So again, not the worst idea ever. But we will get mobility up to three before too long, but that can probably wait a little bit. Let's do Use Magic Device. Our spells are going to be the typical stuff for melee touch attacks, of course buffs. You are going to buff more than normal, as you are a tanky tank build with decent armor on. Why not be a guy that basically swings like a brick shithouse? So, we will have more buffs than you're probably used to, and that's fine. But we're still going to have plenty of attacks, don't worry about that. Note that the attacks will be things that are fire spells with DC checks and transmutation spells, but sadly there's nothing yet for level 1 that's a transmutation spell with a DC check. Having said that, there is a transmutation spell I want. While normally I would advocate never grabbing this, you are a strength-based character. And while, yes, there's going to be a penalty to the swing, there's also a bonus to the swing in that our strength goes up. So again, it's a wash. We do more damage, and that's really the only real reason for wanting this. Besides this, we're also going to be a two-weapon, or sorry, two-handed wielding son of a bitch, just like the Abyssal Bloodline did. Instead of going Glaive, I'm going to do Bardiche just to, to change it up a little bit. But the trick here is it has to be a two-handed weapon, and it has to have a six-foot range. The reason for the six-foot range is when you go in large person, that range jumps up from six feet to ten feet. That's nice. It means we can reach stuff that, you know, if someone else is tanking for, especially at the early levels, we can reach them with the Bardiche without having to wander around to that bastard. We can probably just reach them from the dog pile that we're in, and with, that's fine. Yes, there's a penalty to your decks and reflexes and your armor class twice, so there's all kinds of nasty here. But I think the damage and the reaches outweighs it. So again, and it also helps us compete with the, the strength that that Abyssal Bastard is getting. Now, having said that, all these tricks that we're doing for extra strength in large person, hell, I'm even going to grab Bull Strength by the end of this build, which is something I never do. They can do all that shit too, so don't be like, oh, you're going to be fine. No, you're not going to be fine. The Abyssal guy is definitely going to trounce us when it comes to strength damage, but we're still going to be okay. Trust me on this. And large person though is our pick here. Keep going. Now we're getting a little concentration bonus, something that they don't get, and we get plus two right now. Steadily going to get all the way to plus eight and then immune to concentration checks, which is going to be awesome. Now you want perception and persuasion every time. Why? Because now when this gets to level seven, this will be seven, this will be six. 
So one, two, one, two, every time, one, two, one, two. Now we have an extra one, feel free to put it somewhere else. We can unlock that arcana now. We can do mobility now, up to you. I, I don't mind unlocking things though, because again, I hate that we can't use it. We may not pass the check, but at the very least we should be able to try it. So I unlock it. Uh, but this is the only things that we are going to invest in. This and uh, three points in mobility. From here, we're grabbing that weapon focus and Bardish. Uh, you can, in this build, go Wand Wielder, Wand Mastery. More important, in my opinion, to switch this than to Quarter Staff, which is a viable option. However, Quarter Staff doesn't have a six foot reach, just so we're clear. When you get bigger, I'm fairly certain the reach changes. Two probably goes to six, is my guess. That's still something, and don't get me wrong. But I like the six going to ten, because you really do feel that ten foot reach. That's pretty damn large. Um, and I could do these because, again, you're going to have the highest charisma possible, which is, you know, the reason I love to do Wand Mastery. But I, I, I've done that before. Feel free to do it. You have the, the extra points in here to do it because we're going to go weapon heavy. Uh, buff heavy also matters to me, too. So extended magic for our buffs so that at least my early ones can be on me for twice as long. You know what I mean? Uh, from here, we get magic missile for free. What's our next pick? I have it on paper, guys. You guys are in trouble now. Uh, even though we are not going solo... I'm recommending Expeditious Retreat. Now, why? If you're not the main tank, you're the off tank, which means you can run around and do stuff. How do you run around faster? Well, here you go, baby. It's the easiest way for you to do it. Picture it. Here's the wizard over here, or some other Ignir caster, kineticist, whatever type, that's going to blast you and your team at range. He sends in two or three of his friends, which are like a barbarian, a rogue, and a fighter, let's say, and they rush up. Well, of course, we could rush up and fight those dudes, but this caster is still going to be back there pelting us with spells and just being a general douchebag, right? So what do we do? Well, send in your other main tank, because remember, you're not main tanking right now. So send in Jathel. Send in another melee like um, uh, Valerie. Send in, hell, even the Magus guy, when he shows up, you can send him in. He's tough enough. You can buff him up, and he can totally tank for you a little bit, even if it's just for a little while. And then with your Expeditious Retreat on, you just run around in a circle around these guys, half circle, to the caster type. Will you peel one or two of these guys off with you? Maybe. Who cares? You're the tank type anyway, so you'll be buffed up besides. Kill that wizard or caster type, and then turn your attention to the, the melee-ers, and your team will do the same, of course. So, again, still a, a decent spell, in my opinion. Keep going. Charisma from start to finish. Perception, persuasion, remember, you always have to invest in both now. Uh, at level 2, for free sp or spell picks, blur, frigid touch, obvious. Remember, melee touch attack is still a thing for you. Keep going, Magus. Steps and persuasion, and now I'll um, uh, put a point in mobility. We don't have to unlock it. Remember, mobility and athletics and stealth are just innate. So whatever this number is here, you're actually getting it. But plus one is lame sauce, so might as well have it be plus two. And again, we are going to take it to three before too long. Now, we're grabbing power attack. And the other one here is dazzling display. Now note, for dazzling display, you needed weapon focus, right? So, could I have switched weapon focus with power attack? Sure, I could have. Why didn't I? Well... You already have a strength of 18, it's not getting any better until we cast spells or buff ourselves with magical belts of strength. But by and large, an 18 is a pretty solid swing. And again, instead of it being 4 points of damage, since we're using a two-handed weapon, that goes to 50% more, so plus 4 turns into plus 6 damage. I'm fine with that. And it'll be plus 7 with the enlarged person on. But the point is, I'm still happy with that damage. I don't need another plus 2 or plus 3 quite so fast. Uh, this is going to be a penalty to swing. We can't really afford the penalty to swing. Now I gave myself a bonus to my swing, so it's more likely I'm doing that damage. And now this plus one bonus is offsetting this minus one penalty. You see what I did there? So get the bonus first, then take the penalty, and then from there you're building in your base attack bonus to a point where it's respectable, and you can take those minus one, minus two, minus four by the end of our build penalties to your swing. Totally worth it. And at this point I probably will leave power attack on almost all the time level 2 spell. Now we got Frigid Touch and Blur. You know I'm going to get myself some Scorching Ray. Keep going to Magus. And grabbing Enduring Blade, uh, Ghost Blade, and Bane Blade as soon as they are available. Why those three? You are a weapon-wielding son of a bitch in this one. Yes, you cast spells. Yes, our spells do damage. And you may be like, well, aren't you just a caster that does weapon attacks? No, in my opinion, in this build, you are a weapon-dealing de son of a bitch. Because it's your weapon that's going to be doing most of our damage and scaring the shit out of the bad guys. So, softening them up for everyone else. Yes, you have spells. Yes, those spells are awesome. They're going to be amazing. However, think about the spells we're talking about. Fire and transmutation. What really falls under those categories? 
flash in the pan, instant damage spells like Fireball, Burning Arc, Dragon's Breath, shit like that, where it's cast it and it's done. That's awesome. So I don't need to be an awesome caster. I already am one. Then go to transmutation spells. Those are debuffs, crowd control, stuff that you're going to cast at the beginning of a fight, more likely than not. Lock up a guy or slow them down or catch them in a web spell. You get the idea. Hell, Obsidian Flow is going to be amazing for locking guys down and doing damage. But you'll do that at the beginning of the fight, and then after the fire settles, so to speak, you rush in and just slaughter their asses with your weapon. So again, not a whole lot besides buffs and preemptive attacks is really what we're doing here. So your weapon is going to be important, hence the upgrades to your blade. Level 2, after Scorching Ray, I grab a Transmutation spell, Web. Not great early on, I'll grant you. So it's a great spell, it's just not teammate friendly. However, trust me when I say you're really going to want this spell, I'll show you why later. Going Magus, now we're Medium Armor, and at this point, uh, the spell magic for free too. But at the point that you get Medium Armor, I say you're probably starting to take over the tanking job, so to speak. Notice 7 and 6. 6 was necessary by this level, and now we don't have to invest in Persuasion quite so much. So again, whatever you feel like is lacking, feel free to bump it. We can get mobility up to that 3 sooner than later. Up to you. But this is why you did that, Persuasion 6. Corn against Smash. Now what does this thing do? So long as you attack them with Power Attack on, which I said I'd leave on probably from start to finish now, whoever I attack, I try to intimidate. If I intimidate them, they're scurred. Because they're scurred, it's easier to hit them. It's easier, or, uh, they do less... Um, they're less likely to hit me because they have like a penalty to their swing and their saves go down so it's easier for most of my spells to land as well as my teammates now so again really helpful single target though more on that later level one uh, we grab our expeditious retreat now i originally had that i grabbed burning hands here but i'm actually going to recant on that i will get it uh, note that i will get it uh, last because i'm going to grab grease another spell that you're going to love trust me good from start to finish you know that it is a conjuration spell so no real buff in that regards however there's plenty of reasons to like it and we'll show you why here before too long level three grab your displacement grab your vampiric touch remember if you're the tank now you want extra hit points and you want to be missed 50 percent of the time i assume so here you go good tanking spells for you and dispel magic remember that's the version that will allow you to dispel ground based effects like your grease spell your web spell your siroko obsidian flow tar pool all that shit doesn't work all the time, but if you really need to make it go away, that's the way to do it, because Greater Dispel Magic apparently will not do that shit. Let's keep going. More Charasma. Get that Perception up, and again, just because I said that you're done with Persuasion doesn't mean you can't put points in it every now and again. That's just not as crucial. I'd rather finish off a couple things like Mobility and use Magic Device, and then we can split our attention between Persuasion and Arcana. From here, you have yourself... Uh, some decent attacks going. You could go fireball, and again, we're about to be a fire guy, so it makes sense to get this now. However, we're going to be a transmuting guy way before that. So slow spell, in my opinion, is a better pick. Teammate friendly, a penalty to their reflex saves, a penalty to their armor class, a penalty to their swing, and they move slow, and they're staggered. Oh my, this is an amazing spell. And transmutation with a uh, saving throw. So our DC check on this is going to be minimum at the end of the build, four, maximum six. Probably, I'll well, actually take it at 6 or 7, because I could meta magic it possibly. Level 9, free spell pick time, baby. So, what are we going to pick for our free spell? Well, first, let's get some perception. Mobility's done. Let's put one in Narcana because it's lounging behind. And if you really think use magic device could use it now, go ahead. Or we could put two in use magic device and now we'll officially be done with use magic device. Three points is enough because once this finally is done at 24, we'll get two more buffs here. And this 13 will jump up to a 15. And that's more than enough for me, as far as I'm concerned. So let's do that. So now I don't only have to think about Persuasion and Arcana. And of course, always, always Perception. Now, let's jump immediately to our new Arcana. What can we grab? There's plenty of stuff to pick from. Bone Shaker's decent. Battering Blast is nice, as you know. Fire spell-wise, Burning Arc is here. A spell that we are going to get. Not bad. I could grab... Uh, there is a Touch of Gracelessness here. This is a level 1... Um, transmutation spell akin to the necromancy spell ray of enfeeblement but instead of it being a beam it is a melee touch attack which is fine for us because we're strength based and you're going to be in melee you have the best armor on right so that's no problem and it's a guarantee just like the necromancy spell which does strength this one does dexterity penalties and again just like the other one even if they make the check they still take dex penalties it's just half 
So that's still nice. And again, we have a better chance to land this than we do the necromancy spell because it's a transmutation spell. So the DC check is going to be plus four to plus six higher for us. So again, a decent spell. Now, I'm not grabbing it. Why? Because it's single target for one. If I could have gotten it early on, I would have grabbed it in a heartbeat. But as a free pick, hell no. We got way better choices than that. And you know I have to get myself some sense of Come on, man. This is the reason you go arcane, really. Level 9 ability to sneak attack damage where everyone has to wait 10 more goddamn levels to get it? Hell yeah, you want that sense fiddles. Really, really nice damage, and we're setting ourselves up for some sneak attack damage, as you'll see here in just a mo. Now, Ghost Blade, obvious pick. Feet pick time. What are we grabbing at 9, class? It's down in the S category, and it's called Shatter Defenses. And just like I said, we are setting up flat-footed. That's what sneak attack is, right? If it's flat-footed, you can do sneak attack damage. Of course, you have to have sense vitals on yourself, and they have to be flat-footed. How do we do that? If they're shaken, frightened, or panicked. And remember, if we have power attack on, whoever we attack, we do an intimidate check on, and then after that first attack, they're shaken, pa panicked, or feared from us, basically. So again, we just set up flat-footed for whoever we're swinging at. Now, not for the first hit, but every hit thereafter. So it's a slow burn, I'll grant you. But we will get things like invisibility, as you see, and greater invisibility before too long, we can get that at 10 or probably 11, but the point is, is we will have the ability to set that up. Not a problem. And again, just because you're the tank doesn't mean you don't have a melee buddy with you. If they're flanked, unless they've changed this, it used to be anyway, where if they're flanked by someone in melee, you can sneak attack all day long. So I don't even have to set up invisibility on this. I just keep another melee fighter right alongside me, and I'll just be crushing shit. Keep going. Level 3. Now, I'm going to grab that fireball because, again, you are a fire guy or will be before too long. And who doesn't like some AoE damage? Keep going. Now, remember, you have Dimension Door for free. It doesn't have the thumbs down, so be wary of that. So first for level 2, Sense Vitals. Uh, where do we get out of that one? I have... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Mirror Image. You want to be tanky, here's your way of doing it. Now... Remember, Dimension Door is free. Don't not pick that. It's already coming. Dragon's Breath in is an obvious pick still. And Stone Skin. And remember, the Abyssal guy gets Stone Skin for free. So another way to you keep toe-to-toe -to -toe with this jackass. Remember, he's going to beat us on a lot of things. There's many things that we can prevent him from beating us on. This is an example of one. Keep going. From here. First, switch to this one, and I want you to check something. Look under the W's. Nothing here, right? Nothing here. Scroll down. Nothing there. Check the bottom. Nothing in the bottom. Oh, that sucks. Well, why do I check the W's, brother? Let me show you why. Boom. Wings. You have to pick it here. You can't pick it with these ones. Okay? But this is the one that's available to Asmers only if your character level 10 or higher. Character level. Doesn't matter if your class level is whatever. It's character level 10 or higher. So, of course, as soon as we could pick it up as 11. And, of course, you're doing so. Plus three to your dodge armor class for melee attacks. That's awesome. You're a tank. You totally want that. Then, immunity at ground-based effects, which includes, but not limited to, difficult terrain. That's like grease spell, web spell, the after effects of obsidian flow. Oddly, not the effects of tar pool. Seems weird to me, but I did check that the other day. I was quite pissed. So I redid the video, which is where we're at right now. Then, for our other pick at 11, what did we grab? I think this is time for a spell focus. So, time to grab yourself spell focus transmutation. Now, could I go elemental focus fire? Sure. You have fire spells. There's no reason not to. Matter of fact, the, the spell that we're going to get free here before too long is going to be a fire spell. However, it's also a transmutation spell. So, again, potato, potato, kind of whichever you want. But still, I don't mind going transmutation. And remember, that includes things like web spell and slow spell. So again, we do have spells that need a debuff loving. Level 1, time to grab yourself your last pick. Now, of course, I can grab Burning Hands and we'll do so. That doesn't mean you couldn't grab Color Spray. Raven Fieldman's still good. Snowball's okay. You remember, your dexterity is still kind of suck. But you do have a decent base attack bonus, and it is a touch attack. So again, ray spells are not the worst thing ever. It's just not great choices. I'm not going to do the cheese where you do the stun fist. For those of you, or stone fist. For those of you that don't know, uh, there's a glitch in the game. I don't know why it does this, and I'm not complaining. So I'm not going to try to screw you out of it. But Stone Fist is much like fighting uh, with your unarmed strikes. If you ever switch to unarmed strikes and try to do a shocking grass through your fist, you will actually punch them in the face for physical damage, shock them for shocking damage, and then shock them a second time, which is a completely different roll with one casting of the spell. It's basically like double damage. 
is the way to, or two castings of the spell, however you want to look at it. And it works for Shocking Grass, Frigid Touch, and even Vampire Touch. Hell, it even works for Touch of Fatigue, but it doesn't matter because it's either fatigued or not. But I guess maybe they save twice, so maybe that's something. But again, the point's still the same. You get double damage from that shit. That's wild. You can do the same with Stone Fist, then. Convert to Stone Fist, and then use your melee touch attacks. And again, I don't do this because, A, I know it's broken and therefore cheesy. And I don't like the Stone Fist, quite frankly, because, again, it's a physical punching versus you using a really heavy-hitting two-handed weapon. So up to you. But again, there's plenty of other choices. And just to note that while Burning Hands is not teammate-friendly, neither is Color Spray, I don't mind it so much on this build, and here's why. You're the tank now, right? So you should be in the front of a big uh, tree shape or triangle-shaped pyramid. So, as you're the top spear, those guys are charging you, you cast this spell in a cone in front of you, and you're the frontmost character, chances are you're not going to affect the team, with the exception of, of course, one or two melee types that just love to charge in, looking at you, Amiri. Keep a, a tight leash on her, and you'll be fine. But by and large, this comes in super, super handy, in my opinion. Uh, level 4, after Stone Skin drives Breath of Dimension Door, what do we pick up? Oh, let's get some more fire, shall we? Controlled fireball it is. Uh, yeah. Notice that we have Break Enchantment unlocked. We won't get that till 13. And I should have pointed out at level 9, remember we got another bonus for a concentration check, a plus 2, now a plus 3. I assume we're going to get another plus 2. More Charisma. More Perception. Uh, more Arcana, sure, why not. Uh, from here, if you don't see a, a blade weapon that we needed to pick up, remember Bane Blade's the last one, then it's basically a free pick time. So I'm going to grab Preaching Attack. You may choose what you want. I will get Maximized Magic for our last free pick. Again, so that means you have three free picks. If you, as long as you follow my advice for Enduring Blade, Ghost Blade, and Bane Blade, here, here, and here, I think it's worth a while. The, then you can just do what you want with these three extra ones. Feel free to go wand wielder, wand mastery, and something crazy. I don't care. But you definitely want the, the weapon upgrades, those three in particular. Why am I grabbing Preaching Attack then? Well, even though I don't have a lot of race spells, I still want them to hit, and this is a nice way of doing it. But remember, we need to set people up for uh, some sneak attack damage, thanks to Sense Vitals. What's a good way of doing that? Making sure they're flat-footed. What is Preaching Attack to? Make sure they're flat-footed for one combat round. So again, even if I'm not invisible and no one's standing next to me, if I want to do sneak attack damage and I have Sense Vitals on my character, then I can just activate Preaching Attack and sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack. This is sweet. Uh, from there, it'll come in more handy when we get higher levels, but I'll show you that when we get to it. Level 4. Uh, I say greater in Viz time. Yep, definitely greater in Viz time. Uh, and again, while you may be the tank, doesn't mean you don't want greater in Viz on your character. And it doesn't mean you can't cast it on another teammate so they can benefit from it. You know, give it to Octavia. Let her have sneak attack damage. She can do it well. So, you know, have her go to town with those ray spells, and that way she don't have to waste this spell on herself. Fine. Perfectly viable. If you don't like that, cast it on yourself. And again, there's plenty of buffs from being invisible. So, you know, feel free to rock it. There's nothing wrong with that. Downside is, is being the tank, they're not going to aggro onto you too much because they probably can't see your ass. They're going to take damage and run to someone else. So what? You already have another tank-type character standing next to you. Let them take the beating while you basically clean their clock. Again, it's going to be a nice buff for you. Keep going, Magus. Now we're in heavy armor, and again, you're officially the tank by now, if not sooner. More Perception, more Persuasion, more Arcana. Now, what do we get at 13? 13 is... Your first and only meta magic. Now, which one do you want? Do you want reach spell? Do you want to make sure they shoot farther? Do you want to extend the duration of your buffs and other spells that do damage over time? Or do you want to just do more damage? You know, all viable options, in my opinion. Would not grab Quicken, but other than that, go with what you feel. Even maximize is not the worst case scenario here. I mean, it sucks, but, you know, again, I'm going to get the maximized magic over here, so I don't really need this one. But a mana magic empowered spell that's been maximized, forget about it. That shit's going to be fun. So you could totally rock that one. Uh, but the way I do it is this. Look at the spells. If you don't have a spell list in, in mind, think about what we're trying to buff. We're, we're buffing two different categories of spells for sure, right? Transmutation spells and fire spells. And yes, uh, self-buff spells as well which is a, a separate category, but still important. Now, on that, can you empower those spells? Fire spells, for sure. Most of them do damage, and therefore variable damage, and therefore can be empowered. What about extend? Well, sadly, and here's the problem, if they're cone spells, you can't, ex uh, sorry, if they're instantaneous damage spells, you can't extend them. 
So that's not doing you a whole lot of good for those fire spells. There's some that like Sirocco that are over time, so extend still a viable option. But now watch this. Sirocco's already a level six. We can't empower it, extend it, or reach it because it would be a level seven or higher spell. We can't cast those. So don't even think about that one. But think about your other ones, like um, your transmutation spells that can be extended, ones that have durations over time. There's some that are instantaneous. There's some that are permanent penalties to the bad guy. Obviously, you can't extend those, but still works for several of your categories and works for several of the categories of your self-appointed buffs. Now, having said that, what about reach? Okay, well, here's the thing. For self-appointed buffs, many of them are personal. Think of, like, your shield spell. Okay, you can't empower it because there's no die roll. You can't uh, reach it because, again, the, the, the uh, um, distance or the, the, uh, yeah, the distance of the spell is literally personal. Not touch, like some of your spells. Touch is fine because touch we can shoot at a distance so you can reach those spells. But personal, you can't extend it beyond personal. It's still personal. So there's no way to reach shield spell. See that? And that's not all of your buffs. There's plenty, like I said, greater invisibility we just took, remember? And that one we can cast on a teammate. So again, you could reach that spell. There's no reason you can't. Uh, but extend works for several of our buffs as well. Now what about your damaging spells? Well, a lot of them are long range already. Fireball is, control fireball is, and the ones that aren't are like cones or narrow beams like lightning bolt. You can't reach any of those. So again, we've limited ourselves. Now having said that, what about the transmutation spells? The one you really, really care about. Like obsidian flow and tar pool, slow, web. I don't know about web, but I know slow and the other ones you can reach them. And in many cases you can extend them. And in, in a couple of cases, you can empower them, like Obsidian Flow does damage. So we can empower that goober. So again, we have categories, just depends on what you want. I don't know what the right answer is for me. I, and every given day, I'll pick something different. Earlier I did Empower, then I did it Reach, and then I did Extend today, because I'll just do Extend, because why not? Self buffs are nice, and I do like having Sense Vitals up for double the duration. And while this is nice, there's only three castings of a day I get to use that. Well, if I use it on this three times, that's something. But if I use it on this and say greater invisibility, well, that's two of my three castings. I have one more use of this, and then what? You see my problem? So again, having this is nice, and having multiple castings then of that spell is still nice. So again, up to you. Uh, from here, new arcana. Free spell pick. I've been mentioning it all this time. We better grab it now. Subsidian flow time, baby. More crowd control. Good damage. And again, with your wings after the... After the fire hit so don't cast this under your feet after the fire splash that bubbling obsidian flow comes out that shit's difficult to rain slows everybody down including your team you fly right across that with those pretty pretty wings of yours so again you will love this spell level three uh i have haste on my build but honestly i think stinking cloud first we'll grab haste later uh level five uh we're gonna grab well first is there a good transmutation spell here's one with a dc check Sounds great to me. What about Fire Spell? Oh, look, Fire Snake. Boom. Obvious picks. Keep going, Magus. Know that you're getting a concentration bonus now from plus three to plus five. That's nice. Higher than anyone else normally. More perception. Ah, more persuasion. You do rule a kingdom after all. You gotta shake those babies and kiss those hands, right? Um, level two spell. Now, I could get Acid Arrow. We're not great at ranged spells, but we're not sucking at it. And the Acid Arrow is a staple. Nothing wrong with it. Stone Call, you may think, okay, he's going for difficult terrain. Yeah, I don't really like Stone Call. I don't even like Ice Storm or Volcanic Storm, quite frankly. The AoEs on him are flipping huge. And while you may think, that's amazing, you're going to hit everybody. Yeah, but it's lame-ass damage, too, so who really gives a damn? Yes, there's no save, so there's that part's nice. And no spell resistance, so again, there's plenty of appeal here. At least it doesn't last forever. One round per level is not that bad. And we do fly over the debris, so there is that too, I'll grant you. So it does have utility. And then you're like, well, probably he's going to go fire spell Molten Morph. I hate this spell. And then I, it's just my own personal hate of it. It's, it's more like you're sh uh, throwing an uh, alchemist flask. You do direct damage to the target if you hit him, which is an if because there is a hit check on this shit. It's not a race spell, I don't think, either. It's literally a lobbying, like a thrown weapon attack. But I haven't verified that. But you literally hit the bastard, uh, and then... Um, it explodes and everyone in a circle around him in a very, very tiny circle takes damage for splash damage. And then everyone gets caught on fire for one to three rounds. So it's not the worst spell ever, but honestly, if I'm going to pick a free spell at level two, I'm going to grab Burning Arc and then this is garbage in comparison. So why would I want this piece of shit? So again, up to you. But I'm not grabbing that. And while I don't have Blind Fight, so again, you might be thinking, oh, he's going for Glitter Dust or even Effortless Armor because he's going to be wearing plate mail. No and no. And here's why. 
Yes, Glitter Dust is nice. We have a full team. Someone's got the ability to cast this, like Lindsay or someone else. So I'm not particularly worried about it. We will get True Seeing at level 16, which is a little bit of ways away anyway. So we'll be able to cast that on ourselves and see invisible targets. So I'm not worried there either. And for this armor, only really matters to me if I know I'm doing a lot of like the athletics, mobility, trickery, stealth type stuff, and you know, the physical checks. The movement penalty sucks, but it's not that big a deal, and you're definitely strong, so you can kind of handle the heavy armor anyway. So again, since we're not really doing athletics or anything else really to any great effect, who cares? So why why even bother with effortless armor at this point? So then what the hell are you grabbing? Something I said I would probably never grab, bull strength. And again, before you say what the hell are you doing, let me, let me justify this. First off, the Abyssal build gets it, which is not a good enough reason to grab it, I'll grant you. However... That bastard has more strength than me already. I don't want to have him have another edge over me. And while, yes, by level 14, I probably already have a, a belt of giant strength plus 4 or greater anyway. If I don't, then I have this. If I do, I still have this, and I can cast it on a teammate, one of their pets, a summon pet, and plenty of reasons to still want the spell. So it's not the worst idea ever. It's not great, I'll grant you, but as far as my choices... The only thing that really sticks out that I'd want to get, quite frankly, would be Acid Arrow, and I really don't need it. So again, up to you. If you feel that this is a dumb pick, grab Acid Arrow, otherwise I still maintain Bull Strength as a solid choice. Now, why is it that I can honestly get rid of that versus, say, Bull Strength? Or, uh, Acid Arrow instead of Bull Strength? Because I know I'm grabbing Acidic Spray now. And again, why versus Cone of Cold? Cone of Cold is easier to light up. It's a big cone versus a tiny narrow beam. More damage. Why did we did not do that then over Fire Snake? Because Fire Snake, we have a DC check. Plus two, thanks to our uh, Elemental Focus and Greater Element, or eventually we'll get Elemental Focus and Greater Elemental Focus. So again, reasons to buff these two, or pick these two before this guy, because they're going to be buffed. Keep going. Now again, at level 15, we get another increase to our Concentration check. So now we're up to a solid plus six. More perception, more persuasion, more arcana. Now I skip over here to go to school power first. Now again, I don't have to do transmutation. You don't either. I'm going to because I want to be awesome at it. If I didn't do transmutation, what would be the obvious pick? I mean, you could be a school focus transmutation, uh, I'm sorry, spell focus and greater spell focus transmutation. You could be elemental focus and greater elemental focus fire. We're still going to do that. And then I could be evocation. Why? Because my transmutation fire spells will still be at a plus four. My evocation fire spells will be at a plus four. You can see the appeal here. You're really good at both those things. And there's a lot of evocation fire spells. Feel free to do that. It feels like we're cheating out on the fact that our transmutation spells were going to be pimp. Let's make them uber pimp. And that's what I'm thinking here. From there, you know you wanted Bane Blade. And then from there, at level 15, this is where the damage for your weapon comes together. Dreadful Carnage. The earliest I can get it for you is at 15. What does this one do? When you kill someone on the map, whether it's with your weapon or with your spells, they die at your hands, a big intimidation check goes off AoE style, and all his buddies are scared shitless now, potentially. If they're scared shitless, that's what Shattered Defenses kick in, so because they're shaken, frightened, or panicked. And as such, it's uh, flat-footed, so sneak attack, sneak attack, sneak attack from that point forward. How do we set this up so we're more likely to kill somebody sooner than later? Well, A, you don't pick the heaviest, meanest dude on the damn map. You pick his little minion buddy standing right next to him and floor that son of a bitch. Kill him and everyone else is scared, potentially even his buddy, the main boss guy. Which is fine. Uh, notice that we'll have sneak attack on probably from Sense Vitals, so that's going to be nice. And again, remember I said preaching attack is going to be useful? Yes, this is more useful for ray spells. Remember, these guys are probably wearing armor. So... This is not going to be extra chances to hit by leaps and bounds. However, Preaching Attack sets up flat-footed, which sets up Sense Vitals, which means Sneak Attack. So even if my hit is lackluster for damage, I'm getting Sneak Attack potential, and I could probably kill that son of a bitch in a swing or two, or at least one combat round, right? Hence, the Dreadful Carnage Intimidation goes off, then the Shattered Fences kicks in for everybody that's scared, I kill another guy, and then the Shattered Defenses kicks off, or the Dreadful Carnage kicks off again. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy of Ash Whoop. You're going to love this build. This is why. Okay? Now, sadly, we don't get to keep up with the other guy on this, because not only does he get all that shit, he also get, because he didn't focus on any schools or elements or anything like that, the Abyssal guy focused on Cleave. Cleaving finish, improved cleaving finish, greater cleaving finish of cleaving this. It's just weird shit. Awesome build. Highly recommend you go look at it. You will love that one too. However, 
We're not getting that because, again, to me, it was more important to go with transmutation and fire for obvious spell focus and spell power reasons. You know, that's what arcane guys do. So that's up to you. But it's still thematically in my brain fit for us to be an expert at transmutation and fire. We still got plenty to work with here. And while he will be lopping heads off like it's going out of style for the other guy, we're still doing plenty of damage. Don't don't feel bad for us. We're doing fine. In this case, I can do Cone of Cold or Cloud Kill. You still have no poison immunity, by the way. And you won't. Someone on the team is going to have to cast that shit on you. But by now, someone's got Delay Poison at least, if not Communal Delay Poison. So I don't mind grabbing Cloud Kill. And again, you notice we grabbed Stinking Cloud earlier, too, for that same reason. But amazing spells. And again, if you want to cheese a boss fight, you almost can't go wrong by making everyone on your team immune to poison and cast this down at your feet, fight in the cloud. They will hate you for it. We'll get Cone of Cold. It'll be the last pick for level 15, but we will get it. Don't don't freak out on me. Actually, is it going to be the last pick? It might not even be the last pick. It might be. It was level 5, yeah. It probably was the last one. Keep going, Magus. Now we can interrupt those caster types if we're standing next to them. Again, Charisma all day, every day. Grab that perception, and instead of persuasion this time, I'm going to up uh, Arcana just a tiny bit more. Level 4 pick. Now, again, grabbing Shout. Amazing spell, as you know. We're not done. We have one more pick still to go, I think, in this category. Uh, and that'll be at level 20. Uh, and at that point, we're probably grabbing something lame like Phantasmal Killer. Something we don't really have a bonus to, but I don't particularly care. And let's do something a little different. And who doesn't like being the wizard that points a finger at somebody and they just clutch their heart and drop dead? from an illusory nothing. That shit's just funny. But shout early on definitely is a bonus to you. Level 6 stuff now. Now you better believe I'm grabbing myself the transmutation power of transformation. No bonus to the DC check because there isn't one. But you definitely want this ability. So let's grab it now. Remember we get true seeing for free. Having said that, am I grabbing Sirocco now? No. I'm actually grabbing another transmutation power. Disintegrate. Remember, we're going to have a plus 4 to the DC check on this, plus 6 at level 20 when I put that cool little toggle on. If they fail this thing, 40 D6 of damage, and you better believe I'm going to maximize that shit so they take all 240. So again, remember our dreadful carnage? We don't have to kill them with a weapon. It can be a spell. A spell like this, perhaps. Take the weakest target you can find that probably has a crappy fortitude check anyway. Nuke his little ass. Scare everyone because they just saw their friend just turn into a pile of dust. And now it's on, baby. Everyone's terrified. And shatter defenses, shatter defenses, sneak attack damage, sneak attack damage. It's gonna be sweet. Keep going. Magus. Free spell pick time. Perception. Arcana. Persuasion. And uh, here is our last two feats here and one there. So three more. So notice that we have greater spell focus waiting for us. Notice we haven't picked any elemental focus. So, of course, you want to do at least that now. Elemental Focus Fire. Then the question is, do you want to do Greater Elemental Focus Fire now to get all your fire spells up to plus two? Or do you want to get that last bump to Transmutation? Remember, we already got this plus two here. The first spell focus in Transmutation put it at plus three. This would put it now at plus four. Up to you. I can't tell you what's right, what's wrong. I, let's just do something different and go fire twice. Why? Because it is lackluster and it needed some love, and here you go. And remember, the one transmutation spell for sure we give a name about is one that's going to benefit from that fire bonus twice anyway. So again, here you go for Obsidian Flow. Now the question is, is my grabbing Tar Pool now? Another one that's a transmutation spell that does fire damage and can benefit from all that fire goodness that we just buffed ourselves with? No, actually I'm not. What am I going to grab? Probably this guy. If I don't grab him, the other option in my mind is... Uh, that I've been toying with is genie kind. And again, reasons for one versus the other. Let me break down why Angelic Aspect makes the cut so early. Well, first off, this is the first I think we've had a chance to pick it up. I don't remember that for the top of my head. It's possible we could have grabbed it here, but again, there's too good of a chance to grab Obsidian Flow. We had to take it. So here's our next chance to grab Angelic Aspect. And what does it give you? Some acid and cold resistance, nothing to write home about. We already had uh, five resistance from both those things, so who cares? That's ten now. Yay! The DR5 slash evil, on the other hand, that's not bad. If you are the tank, let's take less damage, is my thinking. Yes, there's a deflection bonus against evil, plus two resistance bonus against uh, the saves against evil creatures. Basically, it's a protection from evil spell, which is garbage. You'll have better gear than that, and again, that will be nothing. But notice something else. Your weapon is considered good for the purposes of overcoming damage reduction. So if they have DR5 or better slash good... 
we had no way of penetrating that until now. Now, yes, before you get on your high horse, there was options for us having a good weapon or a lawful weapon up here. Uh, I forget what it was called, but it, it was a choice we could have picked. Well, we can still pick it. I'm not going to. I never seem to. But I do like the fact that this spell lasts for one minute per caster level as well, and it has some decent protection for us besides. So that's my logic here. And, by the way, it turns out that it's also a transmutation spell. Just saying. Not because of that, but it was definitely cool. Level 3. Last pick now was going to be Haste. And it is late. I don't mind that, though. Level 6. We already got our Disintegrate True Sing for free. What are we going to grab next? Oh, it's Tarpool time. No. We'll get that later. I'm going to grab... Ah, Sirocco. Yeah, Sirocco. Nice spell. Fire spell, by the way. Going. Magus. Remember, we're getting our bonus to concentration again. Now we're up to a solid plus 8 to our concentration checks. Way ahead of everybody else in this game. More Perception, more Arcana, because why the hell not? Uh, now, this is your free pick. This was the one, the Devoted Blade, there you go. That was the one that you could have picked that made you lawful, or evil, or good, or chaotic, depending on your alignment. You can have a weapon based on that type of stuff. I never seem to get it, and I could be wrong on that. I could be completely wrong on it, like I've been wrong on Brilliant Energy being okay. Brilliant Energy turns out it's amazing. I was just using it wrong, but... Devoted Blade could be awesome. I just I just can't seem to get into it. You need to know what you're fighting. So you need to know that he's evil or good. or It's too much prep time. You know, you have to know all that shit. And while, yes, you can change on the fly, it seems wasteful to do so. I'd just rather do Bane Blade and go to town knowing that it's a Bane weapon against everybody. And that's good enough for me in most cases. From here, though, I am going to grab Maximize Magic. Now, having said that, again, Quicken Magic is a viable option for those of you that want to do your meta magic stuff. Remember, that takes a full cast around cast them spells so you can quicken that shit and make it like poof and go right back to fighting up to you you're on a team so you don't really need to cast quickly in my opinion so i'm not a big fan of that one per se but i can see the argument i'm getting maximized here and again if you went instead of extend if you went empowered who baby you're gonna have some fun with that shit but up to you and again there really is no wrong answer here uh from there Free spell pick here. I am going to grab uh, Hellfire Ray, but not right now. I'm going to grab Dragonkind 1. Now, this may be a, a one that's uh, later on I decide is garbage and that I don't need it. It's not that the spell's garbage, it's just it's, it's lackluster compared to some of the other stuff we could do. Like Acid Fog could be amazing. Chain Lightning is awesome, as you know. So, again, you see the appeal. And we are getting Hellfire Ray, but sadly that will be one of our last picks. So, yeah. A dragon kind is a transmutation, and I know that's not an argument for picking it, but follow the logic on this. Not only can you cast spells while you're in this form, it's a buff, no minus, and if I have a large person on, as weird as it is to say, I'm bigger size category because I'm a large person, right? Remember the minus one to your swing as well as the minus one to your armor class because of the, your big old fatty head and everyone can hit you now? If you use dragon kind after you do a large person, you're considered human size, which takes those minus one penalties away. You're, you're still at a minus two for dex, that's still a thing. But, I thought that shit was funny. Also, one last note here, but while, of course, you get a bunch of extra attacks around, just saying, and for sneak attack, love, and oh, baby, five attacks around from all those bites and claws and wings and shit, pretty awesome. You get a breath weapon, and that breath weapon, of course, is only one use wonder, but it's the weapon that uh, of the dragon kind that you pick. Now, having said that, there's a DC check for that. The DC check is actually based off of your transmutation buff, which we have plus four, as you recall, plus six if we have our toggle on, which of course we will. But, and here's where it gets weird, and I need to just show you this. It has no impact, elemental focus doesn't impact the DC check of this spe uh, breath weapon, excuse me, at all. Which seems weird to me, that the transmutation spell focus and greater spell focus works fine. School power of transmutation works fine, but elemental focus doesn't do shit. But I wanted to show that to you, so that's another reason for grabbing it. If you don't like it, grab Acid Fall, grab Chain Lightning, either of them is fine. And again, if I were to pick, uh, honestly, I'd, I'd, I'd pick Chain Lightning, quite frankly. If we had some serious acid protection under our belt, I'd do this. And yes, well, before you say, well, you got Angelic Aspect, yes, we do, and that's 10, and that's more than enough to protect us from most of that damage. That's good enough for me. I still don't like it as much as I like instant damage like Chain Lightning. We got Sirocco. We got, uh, we will get tar pool. We're going to have Obsidian Flow in two different categories. We're going to have plenty of big old AoE moves. Acid Fog is just a little lackluster, in my opinion, at that point. But, up to you. 
Now, we get all the other free spells that we are going to get. Uh, yeah, sure. We're done with Arcana now. The rest will go in Perception and Persuasion. Now, Greater Spell Focus, Transmutation. We're done there. Now we're at a solid plus four for all those spells. Cone of Cold finally make the cut. Now, you can do like I always do. I work my way from the bottom up, fill up with six, and then keep going and say, oh, I like that one too. Well, what can I get rid of in favor of that? That's the best way, in my opinion, to do it. So, Touch of uh, Gracelessness, that's the transmutation one I mentioned before. Minus uh, Dexterity. Even if they make the check, it's still minus Dexterity. But it's a Touch Attack and meh, kind of lackluster. Anything else in here? Not a goddamn thing that I care about. Moving on to level two. If you don't have Sense Vitals by now, and really what the hell's wrong with you, you better be picking it up now. But you could have pushed it back, I suppose. Everyone else gets it at 19. Why shouldn't you? Because you're cooler and you want to get it at 9. Duh. But Resist Energy, on the other hand, is awesome. And I definitely want that one. A nice protection for anything that I want. And yes, this is nice for Acid or Cold, but it's only 10. This is now 30 from anything. Acid, Cold, Electric, Fire, Sonic. So up to you. And I like that spell. Now, I could grab Molten Orb, Pass, Burning Arc, on the other hand. I'll take that shit. That's a nice fire spell, and it's level 2. Bouncy McBounce bounce all through their faces. DC check, so reflex check to make sure they don't take half damage. But if I have a plus 2 on it, plus 4 with my toggle on, maybe I could even shoot that a little farther. Close. Range. You know, so if you did uh, the range for Meta Magic instead of Extend like I grabbed, you could have shot that farther. Hell, you could have empowered it to do 50% more damage. So again, another plus one to the DC check if you went two other ways that I didn't go. Just saying, still a great spell though. Bone Shaker, passing on it because we know we're going to probably grab Bone Shatter. And it's the better version of the two, I only need one. Protection from energy, it's decent. If you need to be immune to damage for a little bit of time, this is an amazing spell. Uh, stacked with this, it's nice. But again, just by itself, it's kind of meh. Yes, we have this, so getting this too is not the worst idea ever, but we probably already have someone on the team that's casting that shit by now. I just like being self-sufficient, hence the resist energy pick here. So I'm going to pass on protection from energy. Having said that, heroism looks nice, so does battering blast, but you're not great at casting ray spells. Not that you suck at it, and appreciate attack really evens the odds on that shit. And heroism is good, but greater heroism, as you know, is better, and we can pick that up too, by the way. So let's pass on that for now. What else we have here at level 4? Uh, we have Minervation, as weird as it is to say, there's no save to it. And it is really good ray spell, just saying, I'm not picking it, but it's a possibility. Here's Bone Shatter, grabbing that for sure. We could get an Animate Dead or a Summon Monster or 4, 5, or 6 or something, but that's not really your thing. If you feel like you want it just because it's cool, hey man, I ain't gonna stop you. And an Animate Dead for a Fallen Angel is... I don't know, it feels insulting to me, but, you know, you can you know, justify it in your pea brain. Go ahead, man, I'm not going to stop you. It's just, it doesn't feel right to me here. Um, I could grab Shadow Evocation, again, as you know, an amazing spell, but, again, the only ones we're really going to buff out of this are the fire ones, which is Fireball, again, and Volcanic Storm. And, again, that's cool. And, again, we should be immune to the difficult terrain that it generates, so yay, I guess. Uh, but, uh, up to you, I'm going to pass. We don't have any paralysis spells. That seems like a mistake on my part. But at level 19, it's really late to start picking them up. Not that we couldn't benefit from it, but someone in the team's probably been setting you up for that shit by now, so why take that job from them? Genie Kind, on the other hand, is a possibility, and we'll go over it in detail when we probably decide to drop it from the list. Last pick, uh, you can get Animal Growth. You don't have pets. Someone on your team does, probably, depending on who you bring. So... Yay, you can buff them up and it's cool, don't get me wrong, but I, I hate picking spells that don't benefit me when I'm running solo. And I know we're not supposed to go solo in this build, that's not the point, it's just, it makes me want to pick that teammate all the time, you know what I'm saying? Because, oh, he's got the wolf, we got, we got, got the spell for the wolf, don't you? Don't you want to use that combo? Yeah, I really do, and it's a good combo, but that means I'm always picking him and that limits my team pick then for everybody else, see what I'm saying? So I hate setting stuff up like that, it just seems weird. Uh, Undeath to Death, Circle of Death are all viable options. Pass. Tar Pool, obviously we're picking, so we might as well just grab that now. Other stuff in here, Greater Heroism. Well, let's just get rid of this Touch of Gracelessness. We knew it was kind of a probably not going to be anyway, so let's grab Greater Heroism in its place. Is there anything else we must have? Hellfire Ray we'll pick up by ourselves anyway. Eye Bite's nice. Elemental Scissors. Eh. Uh, Cold Eye Strike is nice, but we don't have any real buff to it. 
Um, eh, you know, there's there's stuff in here. You know, acid fog again, Banshee blast, boring. Uh, change of light could be decent for crowd control. You know, single target lockdown. But again, we already have people that are immobilizing people on the party, right? So, this is my pick. So we've gone from Cone of Cold, Greater Heroism, Resist Energy, Burning Arc, Bone Shatter, Genie Kind, Tar Pool. Now why Genie Kind? Remember, because I could have swapped it out for, say, Circle of Death, or Undeath to Death. Again, amazing spells, as you know. Why Genie Kind? Well, for one, you can cast spells in this form. And that's not an amazing reason, but it's helpful. I could stack it with Dragon Kind. Again, not an amazing argument, but again, it is helpful. Uh, I get armor for this, uh, which is not amazing, but the armor is natural armor enhancement plus four. That's just like bark skin slash the necklace of amulet of natural armor, which you probably have the plus five version. Well, then that's the best version. It's not going to stack, so why the hell would you want this? Well, now follow the logic. If I do this, I can take that necklace off and put on something different. And I still you know, went down in armor, but I only went down a point, and that's cool to me. You know, like I have utility now, I can use that next slot back for something different. Not all the time, but of course, it's helpful. I get a bonus to Constitution, which you probably already have by now. So this plus two is lame sauce. This is more of a spell, in my opinion, for the Sorcerer that they level up. But we didn't have that option. The other fun stuff is, you know, you get racial bonuses to saves against paralysis, poison, sleep, and stunning. And you are the tank. You don't want any of that shit hitting you, right? So that's nice. I'm not going to complain about it. And here's the, the final part. We Besides the immunity to difficult terrain, which we have from Wings anyway. So if you didn't go Wings, if you didn't go Asimer, the difficult terrain immunity is nice for you. It doesn't protect you from web spell, by the way, but it does help out. The real reason is this. It's not the resistance. Those are nice. I'm not going to complain, especially since we have no fire protection on our two, not counting, of course, resist energy for fire or dragon kind one where we turn into a fire dragon. This will give me at least 10 resistance from fire or electric, or cold, or acid, depending on which form I pick. And, and there's the solid point here. I can do 1d6 of extra elemental damage based on the element that I pick to my weapon. Now, who cares? I can do electric damage with my weapon. I can make it a frost weapon. I can make it a fire weapon. Why do I care, Brother Mutant? Well, you can't make it an acid weapon. Just saying. It's kind of cool, and I dig it. And it's a transmutation spell, and I know that's not an argument for wanting to pick it. It doesn't last very long either, which, again, it sucks in a lot of ways but there's a lot of plus here in my mind up to you though but i still maintain that you will enjoy having that spell plus it looks baller i mean I, and i know that shouldn't be an argument but so what it is if you don't like the look of your tune are you going to play it for hours on end i think no last point charisma baby bay. solid plus seven nice 15 there a little more persuasion i like that and again you're making all those persuasion checks and buffs and helps beside but you're getting free XP from all those high, high persuasion checks, hopefully. Last two picks here. Uh, again, Phantasmal Killer. You could convince me of Ice Storm or Shield of Dawn, but I'm not a fan. Uh, if I had to pick between those two, quite frankly, it'd be Ice Storm, and I'm still not a fan of it. Level 6. Again, you could get that Acid Fog or that Chain Lightning now, but you know me, man. I gotta get me that Hellfire Ray, bro. Come on. You may not be great at uh, melee or ranged touch attacks, but you still have a solid bab. And you do that preaching attack to make sure they have no dex modifier. Foot, foot, foot right in their face, man, for some sneak attack loving. And that's the build, guys. Now let's actually go into the dungeon and do some stuff first. Let's sell some things and take a knee and put everything where it belongs. Now, again, I am going, and I know I don't have to restate this. And I haven't said it yet, but I'm going to say it now. Uh, I'm going Masterwork Bardish. You don't have to. And I don't have to. Remember, I'm not married to this. I'm not a sword saint. So I can switch back. But look at my damage with that bastard. At level 20, without any buffs on me, no magical gear besides, I'm rocking a 19 to 28 per swing, and I can swing three times. Four if I cast haste on myself. Just saying. That's a lot of damage just from a, a masterwork weapon. And that's not with me buffing it up times five and Bane and, and Brilliant Energy buffed besides. I mean, it's lackluster weapon still crushing it and again in a solid six foot range rest up get my spells let's go over here super quick and we're going to take it down through the tenabra steps and we'll show you a little bit about what it can do so basically this video at this point is going to be a couple of combat tricks stuff that you probably already know so feel free to tune out but 
uh, I'm also going to showcase my favorite part, the fact that we have DC checks up the yin-yang with some of your spells. Man, it's going to be freaking epic. Um, so we're going to put down that, and let's grab our buff there. Where's our during blade? Uh, Arcane Strike's coming down here, so it's Power Attack. Make sure those are both on. I'm not going to pull down Spell Combat or Spell Strike because we're going to leave them on all the time. You don't need to have your Familiar on, so we'll just leave them off. I do want the Halo on all the time, but I won't drag it down here. Uh, and the Wings will be on all the time, so I won't drag that down here either. I will, however, take down Bane. Radiant Energy. Ghost Touch. Speed. Appreciate attack. Definitely gonna give me some appreciate attack. I'm gonna leave the lesser restoration up in here because I don't care. And you'll know when to use it. And um, we don't set up anybody for coup de gras. Not not to say your team can't, so feel free to put it on your tray, but again, I'm not going to use it. Uh, at least for purposes of this demonstration. Uh, I can do fire. Where's my spell DC? And attack bonus. I'm not gonna put the uh, spell. Yeah, you know what? I will. I'll put the spell penny. I'll get rid of the speed build. I'll put those three down here. And again, the middle one is our plus two to our DC checks. Then, of course, our extended magic and our maximized magic are going to go over here. I will not put in the cantrips. I don't need a light spell because I got a light spell. It's called Halo, baby. Uh, and I'm not going to put the melee touch attacks in here because you've seen that a million times. But I will put in some solid buffs, especially the ones I want to showcase and show off. Anything that has a good solid use for us or has a DC check bonus to it. Uh, I will, of course, have to talk a little bit about meta magic, but not so much that you have to waste your day on it. You and I'll put the strength one over there just because. And of course, since Vittles, I don't need mirror image. That's good enough. Um, flow, fireball, stankiness, haste. I don't need to put that over there. Dragon's breath can be fire damage depending on the kind you cast. Fireball, or Control Fireball, excuse me, Obsidian Flow, which is Fire and Grand Mutation, Loving. Uh, I don't need to put in those. I'll put in the Greater Invis just to show sneak attack damage. Uh, Baleful Polymorph, oh hell yeah. Fire Snake, want it. Uh, Kini Kind, let's put that buff over here so it's with our Angelic Aspect. Um, don't need to put in any of the others because you really know how those work. And Transformation, you know how that works, but to disintegrate, you want to see that DC check. Greater Hair Wisdom, uh, I'm not going to put over there. Tarpool I'll put over there. I'll put the Dragon Kind over there as a transformation and Sirocco. So, that's it. Uh, I will activate Greater Hair Wisdom though because it's too good to pass up. Remember, that's a one minute per caster level buff. Not as good as the other guy as far as duration. Remember, Hair Wisdom is 10 minutes per caster level. But, if you can't clear the map or whatever you're doing in 20 minutes, what the hell are you doing? It's got to be a huge ass map. And again, chances are you're going out and taking a knee after that with the team anyway. So again, no big deal. And yes, I could have extended it, so double the duration on that. On that, let's actually look at our spell book for some meta magic. Notice that since I only picked one, anything with a dot on it can be, in our case, extended. Okay? If you went in power, it would be different ones lit up. If it was uh, reached, different ones would be lit up. So again, know which one you picked. And yes, you can pick more than one. I did not. Um, but... I wanted to make sure to point out that while the ones at six have dots, we cannot Im extend in power or buff those in any way with the meta magic, of course, the, from our book, because there would be a higher casting than six. Even five is unlikely unless you went extend, which of course we did, or reach, which of course we did not. But if you empowered it, you cannot empower it because five would be seven, right? Same with maximize, it'd be too high. So know your limitations is the point. Uh, of course, as soon as you get, in my opinion, Meta Magic, you would go through your book immediately and make all these little things. Now, as soon as you get another spell, you check to see if it can be Meta Magic, and then again make its upgraded version if it can. So feel free to do that. Notice I already have three spells right now that can one that gets a plus to its DC check, and two that are just longer lasting buffs, which I'm fine with. Uh, level four, Stone Skin. Love to have that one last longer, but. Honestly, as weird as it is to say, I don't particularly care why. I'll make it, of course, because I'm not stupid, but it's one of those where that 10 minute per level, that's at level 20, that's 200 minutes. Chances are you've absorbed all the damage it can absorb. Remember, this is a spell that pops. It absorbs X amount of damage, in this case 150, and then after it absorbs 150, the spell cancels itself, discharges, however you want to call it. 
So this duration is inflated for no good reason. It could have been one minute per level, and chances are you'd still not see the full duration. So again, it's nice that it lasts longer, but we don't have to. It's more about the fact that it's an extra casting. So for example, if I use up all my level 4 spells, but I'd really like another stone skin, oh look, I have one here. You see the utility? That's why we love Mana Magic. Uh, and I'm not going to do this for all these things, but I wanted to show you a couple good ones. Uh, Bone Shatter being a fine example. Uh, oddly, Obsidian Flow cannot be extended. I thought you could, because the duration is an hour. That's surprising. So this one I would probably switch then to Reach or Empower. Yeah, I really wanted to have that be a plus one or, uh, uh, from Meta Magic. Oh, that's a bummer. I can't believe I didn't know that till today. Hmm. <laughs> Well, live in there. Uh, but the point is, you can go through all these ones. Again, slow is another uh, uh, transmutation spell that you want to probably a plus one DC on, so feel free to make it. Uh, same with web. You probably want a plus one DC on it as well, so it's even harder for them to avoid it. And again, it's a transmutation spell. So feel free to go through and do it. I'm not going to do it for all of them. Good news is, is, because we're spontaneous casters, they're already there waiting for us. So we're not a wizard. We don't have to just go back and relearn them, take another knee kind of shit. So that's nice. I can't believe I did not know that about Obsidian Flow. Hmm. That is quite the drag. I was really going to showcase that guy because that was one of my favorites for the DC check. Oh well. Forward. Anyway, uh, some obvious stuff early on, of course. And again, you're on a team, so I don't really have to uh, waste too much time on this. But obvious buffs, shield, enlarged person for some extra damage, expeditious retreat. Amazing spells, as we've mentioned already. You don't get these other ones till much later. Blur, though. So these four are probably my staple. And enlarged person is kind of a judgment call. Remember, there's a penalty to your swing, a penalty to your armor, penalty to your dex, penalty to your reflexes. So there's a lot of reason not to want it. But now watch this. I want to uh, make a case for it. And again, I've done this in another video before too. So if this is boring to you, I apologize. But What's my strength at now? 20. What's his strength at? 22. Yes, he could be at 24 by casting the same spell. Totally understand that. My argument is this. How much damage am I doing with this? With a plus 5, I have plus 5 to my swing. Because I'm a strength-based character, we're talking about our melee attack now. Plus 5 to our swing and plus 5 to our damage, right? No. You're swinging a two-handed weapon. What does that mean then? We do 50% more damage. So plus 5 becomes plus 7.5. They round down. So seven. So still better damage. Okay, it's not much, I'll grant you, but again, it's moving in the right direction. Now, having said that, uh, what is the maximum strength I can have on this character? I have this plus two, then I could get the belt of physical perfection. That's a plus eight to all these stats. Okay, strength, dex, and con. So that's plus eight here, which means a plus four here. However, there's also a um, artisan, a guy or girl that you hire. I'm not going to tell you who. You can find it out online. Don't want to spoil it for you. But the artisan in question can make you a potion as they're one of their triumphant uh, quests kind of thing. And if you get it, you should be the person to chug it on your tune. Why? Because it gives you a plus two to every stat. Strength, dex, con, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma all go up two points permanently with that potion. So uh, technically speaking, I can jump my strength up ten points is what I'm telling you. And it's not even by the end of the damn game. So this 20 could be a solid 30, which would means this goes up 5 more points to plus 10. Now do the math on how much damage am I doing. Okay, so it's a plus 10 to my swing. And 50% uh, more of 10 is 5, so 15 more damage per hit with my weapon. Okay? So this is going to make this number go up a lot more. Now... We're not done yet. And again, this is all still applicable on the other guy, too. I understand that. But again, we ended on a solid number, a plus 10. That even number is necessary because, again, we don't want the fractions. Because as you saw, 7.5 rounded down. We lose out a little. We're talking about breaking points. The breaking points are always a solid plus number here. That's an even number. Plus 2, plus 4, plus 6, obviously plus 10 are solid numbers. The other guy, he's going to be two points ahead of us. Guaranteed. Because he's at least two points ahead of us, what is that going to mean? He's going to end, instead of on a plus 10, he'll end on a plus 11. So again, he'll still do more damage, he'll hit more often. That's a thing, I can't counter that. His damage increase is not that bigger. Uh, half of 11 is 5.5, so he's at 16.5, which again, rounded down, so 16. We did 15, so he's a point bigger. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. I don't mind that. That's my argument for that part. But remember, also we have this thing called power attack, right? 
What does power attack do? Well, again, for every penalty of minus one to your swing, you get a plus two damage. Normally, we have, by the end of our build, a minus four to our power attack. If you transform, by the way, for the transformation spell where you're a fighter, that jacks up to like a minus six, by the way, which is really nice. So again, minus four times two would be eight. So you normally do eight points of damage with, say, like a scimitar, a one-handed weapon. Again, fine. If you're wielding, however, a two-handed weapon, you get, again, 50% more damage. So our minus four going to a plus eight is actually plus 12 because we're using the Bardiche. See what I'm saying? So plus 12, plus 15, I got a plus 27 for my damage, and I'm not even counting Arcane Strike yet, which could add another five goddamn points. So we're doing over 30 points of damage just from buffs, not even the weapon, just the buffs, because we went two-handed, power attacking, and max optimized our strength as much as we possibly could without really gimping our tune as far as charisma is concerned. Still a strong tune is my point, okay? So we're doing okay for ourselves. Yes, the other guy's better, but he was always going to be better. A 22 strength, I just can't compete with when we talk about that. But I still think we landed on a solid, solid tune. So let's buff up with a couple other quick spells. I'll just use the four because we're way overkill for the level that we're at. Because these are all level one, two, and three differences. But come in with your team. Remember, you're in this front, you're spearheading the ship, right? Or uh, at the very least, if we do uh, formations, you're like this person and there's some other tank that's right here next to you early on. When you finally get to the point where you're wearing medium armor, this is your rotation where you're up front. And then there are like the meleeers beside you or behind you. And then this is the range caster slash arrow guys, right? Like Lindsay the Bard and Octavia and all those other guys, right? The Bombardier, the Grenadier. Sorry, I keep saying Bombardier. The Grenadier, uh, Jubilos, for instance, could be in the back. So... That's your typical formation. What does that mean, though? You're up front. Stand you want to be the one that does damage. So we cover everybody in a nice, tight mess. Hopefully they don't skim past you and go to your team. If they add you on to you, that's fine. Let them do attacks of opportunity. You have the armor for it and the buffs for it. So don't worry about that. Clump them up and then go to town. But notice something here. When they get close by, Strike. notice how far I can reach these doofuses. Remember, I have a huge reach of six with my weapon. Normally, I'm a larger person, it's a larger reach. So again, I have a, a much better reach now thanks to that weapon upgrade. Or my uh, size the upgrade, I should say. Uh, from there, other stuff. Remember you have some, some little acid, cold, and electric protection. That's not fire protection, so when you get those fire-breathing jackasses on you, be careful. Uh, they can set you on fire, it will hurt, especially early on. I have oh, I can't believe I made that check. I have a plus zero in that. Unyielding spirit. Yay. And by the way, I have found all kinds of gear in this game in the Tanabra's Depths alone. Where there are bonuses to your illusion spells and enchantment spells. So the illusionist builds are really going to be awesome. Because they have lots of stuff. There's like a, a bracelet, or, or bracers I should say, that give you a bonus to your illusion spells as well as your saves against them. Uh, and then there's a, a, a circlet or some such that gives you, or is it a necklace? Yeah, it's a necklace. Maya's charm. That gives you like a bonus plus two to like illusion spells and, and enchantment spells. Both. So it's just amazing. Uh, you have to be good, I think, to use that, though. So again, look up online. I know it's metagame, but I don't care. Look up online to find out which one you'd have to be to use that perfect gear for your, you know, you know delicate snowflake uh, illusionist uh, enchantment uh, build. But psh, you're going to love it. Okay, but let's do some stuff. So we've got our plus two on. Let's use our level one conjuration spell. So no real bonus to this one. Okay, using it for two reasons. One, because it's awesome, and who doesn't like Grease Spell? Two, because it shows the saving throw for a normal saving throw, because we don't have any real bonus to this, except for, of course, our toggle, right? So, difficulty, 20. Why is it 20? Well, it's base 10, the level of the spell, in this case, 1, so 10 and 1 is 11, plus our Charisma modifier, which is plus 7, the highest it can be naturally, right? So this is, should be an 18, plus 2 because our toggle, but that's still fine. Point is, 18 is the base, the, the, the best normal, if you will, expected DC for a level 1 spell. Remember, that doesn't include spell focus and greater spell focus, spell power, doesn't include our, our plus 1 to DC thanks to meta magic or elemental focus, or of course the toggle. So again, 18 is normal, which of course that's at level 1. Level 2, that would be one point higher than that. So 18 goes to 19, then 19 goes to 20. So you could set up a pie chart, if you or a, a table, that shows 
18, 19, 20, all the way down to level 6 spell to show you what the, the best minimum DC check should be. 18 being level 1, 5 more than that, 23 would be the lowest for or the highest uh, DC for a normal character uh, for a level 6 spell. We're plus 2 higher simply because of this. Now, having said that, that means that our level 1 through 6 spells are always, and I can't stress this enough, always going to be better at the DC check than any wizard or any sorcerer. Why can I say that? Because they will never get true Magus. Right? Now, yes, this is only at level 20, but that is the point. At level 20, we officially become better than them at casting spells 1 through 6. Well, Brother Mutant, it's a conjuration spell. What if he went spell focus and greater spell focus conjuration? He'd get those two points back. Yes, but so could I. I didn't say I hadn't, couldn't do the same feats with them. Remember, there's nothing that they have that's un unique to them that would push their DCs up above ours. This true Magus does. So we're always a step ahead of them. Okay? If they can get the feet, so can we. We didn't, but we could have is my point. So we're always better from 1 through 6. This is our saving grace at level 20. Having said that, let's show you something else. First off, here's your grease spell. Do you actually see me doing any kind of checks? No. Why? Because I have wings on. I'm immune to it. It's not even asking for a uh, reflex check in here, which is weird. I will say it's weird because if I do my web spell, which is one of the next ones we're going to do, the web spell, it does a reflex check, and even if I fail it, it doesn't web me up. Again, I'm going to assume it's because of the wings. So, again, differences and reason you want to go Asthma, in my opinion. Now, let's get a nice spell. Nope, 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 nope. Let's get a nice spell. We group them up. Usually I corral them in a corner thanks to my expeditious retreat. This is more uh, solo tactics than anything. That's why I can do this. On a team, obviously, you just charge your little asses. Uh, but you do like this. And by the way, always hit hold after so you don't run into your own fireball or web spell. But since we're immune, I can run all through this shit. Doesn't do a damn thing. Notice it will do a reflex check. And hell, I already failed. Right? And it is the web spell. Why is it not affecting me? Why don't you see it on my character? Wings. I'm immune to the effect of it. So just because I failed the check doesn't mean shit. That's awesome. And that's at a level 11. Cast that shit at your feet all the time. Yes, your teammates may hate it, but have them stand outside the ring of it. And let them shoot and them go all the crossbows and bows. Let them shoot and use spells. That's fine. You just stand in the middle of it while all bad guys are pissed and debuffed. Remember, what does web do? It's an entangled spell, right? So these bastards, I guarantee you, I have a minus 2 to their swing and a minus 4 to their dex. Which means a minus 2 to their reflexes. And if they're a dex-based character, like a, a weapon finesser or a ranged attacker... That minus two of their swing just went up to minus four. That's awesome for you and your team. That's basically free armor for you, baby. And the DC checks are easier to land than a reflex base because the reflexes are down. So now it's time to do stuff like, uh, here, let's do a burning art. First off, let's look at our, our saving throw. I should say that first. 25. Level two spell. Why is it 25? 10 and uh, two is 12. Plus seven from our charisma is 19. Plus four from transformation puts it at 23. And then two more from our toggle puts it at 25. A solid, solid spell. And remember, we can buff our charisma up five more points with that kick-ass potion and the best tiara of charisma plus eight, which I recommend you grab the mental... It's the hat of mental perfection plus eight. It looks like a giant-ass wizard hat. It's totally pimp. You're going to love it. But again, you leave it on and never touch it again. Just, that's the one piece of gear by, by and by. If it has a charisma bonus to it, unless you're swapping it out for something with a better charisma bonus... You're not swapping it out because then you're losing spells every day. So don't bother with that shit. Just leave the best hat on and, and call that quits. That's the one slot that I won't touch on this build. I, I probably won't even uh, fiddle with the, the belt either that much either. Because remember, it'll be the, the best belt. Plus 8 to strength, plus 8 to dex, plus 8 to con. Yes, I could have a belt that gives me like stone skin and something else. So I might swap it out before a fight to buff myself up with a spell that's stored in the belt per se. And then put back on the plus 8 belt of everything. But that's different. This is a solid, solid hit, and could be five points higher is my point. And that's just from our gear. That's not talking about gear that's like, you'll find like the Necklace of Transmutation. I don't even know, I'm making up names now. That'll give you a plus one or plus two to all your transmutation spells, DC checks. Awesome. Or ones that bonus to your fire. There's a robe, I'm not saying you grab it because again, you wear armor. But there's a robe out there for those of you that are doing a monk build. Where fire, there's robes, one for each of the four elements. That bonus to plus two to the DC checks of fire or cold, or acid, or electric. And it's just a different rope. There's four different ones of them out there. 
So again, if you're doing a monk dip where it doesn't matter that you're wearing robes, grab that shit. You'll be an expert at fire or cold or electric or acid as the need arises. If you know you're going to fight a dude that's acid resistant, switch to the fire robe. If you got a guy that's fire resistant, switch to the cold robe. You know, whatever. But you'll keep a pack of that shit handy. But again, point is, is these numbers can go much higher than what we're seeing. And a 25 is a solid, solid hit at level 20, in my opinion, for the level of a spell that we're talking about. Now, remember, this also set up the reflexes to suck ass. Now, let's hit them with a reflex save spell, like Burning Art, something we got a bonus to. Ooh, and that's my intimidation because someone died. Right, so first, let's look at our save. 23, level 2 spell. Why is it 2 less than this one? Because it's only plus 2 from fire, not a plus 4 from being transmutation. That's the difference here. So it is right. I don't have to redo the math on it. You can just know that it's right. But notice his dexterity is down a lot. Normally it's minus one for these guys. So why is it minus three? He's entangled in the web. Remember minus reflex penalty? So again, minus four to dexterity means minus two to his reflex penalty. That's why you're seeing a minus three here instead of minus one. So again, another minus two penalty here. So it's even easier for my spells to land. So even though that was a, a decent saving throw check in my opinion a 23 is not bad for a level 2 spell technically speaking I consider that a 25 again because I know I've nerfed them by two points that's why I like the web spell and again you can do it any number of ways that you think it's it's uh, how you look at it it's a lot like um, uh, a armor class and to hit bonus okay so your uh, attack bonus let's say I have a, a spell that can increase my attack bonus two, or lower the targets armor two. what's the difference I mean, really, still it's a hit check, and, you know, two less armor or plus two to my swing, it's, it's the same outcome, right? So it's, again, how you look at it. So any penalty I see to their saves, I just think of as, as bonuses to all my DC checks. For, well, for any of their appropriate. Obviously, these are for only the reflex ones, but you get the idea. So that's nice. And then let's hit them with, uh, a nice one. Let's hit them with uh, a nice slow spell. That's a good transmutation spell. Crowd control teammate friendly notice you need a target this is why I say you need probably blind sense um, what blind sense does for those of you that don't know uh, blind sense doesn't allow you to see an invisible target but you know roughly where he is I think in pen and paper this is what they intend spells that need a target to hit them like this not a single target not like a ray spell but like an AOE effect like slow does you need an actual target if he was invisible I would not be able to pick him with my pick right now because I can't see invisible guys but if I had blind sense on I think I'd be able to target him I think that's what that does I don't know that for a fact but that's my guess but now watch this boom real quickly real quickly what did we just do to those guys first off they made their or failed their saves and it's a will save which you gotta love the fact that it's a will save because remember we don't mostly have reflex and some uh, fortitude saves so anytime we come across a decent will save I'm pretty happy is a 26 level 3 spell so 10 3 is 13 plus 7 from charisma is 20 plus 4 because it's a transmutation puts it to 24 2 more for my toggle being on makes it a solid 26 and again I could put that at least 5 points higher to a solid 31 by the highest level character with the best possible gear on my character at least solid solid pick but what did it do to him Yes, they're slower, obviously, the name of the spell. So they move at half the speed. That's nice. Helps me position me and my team. Also, a minus one to their swing. Also, a minus one to their armor class. So it's easier to hit them, and it's harder for them to hit us. I like all these. And the best part, a minus one to their reflexes. And they're staggered, too, but I don't even know what the hell that does. But the minus one to the reflex is nice because, again, soften them up for other reflex-based spells, like web spell. Remember, it's a reflex-based spell. So here's a way to literally soften them up for a lower level spell that's really going to screw them over. And again, how do I look at that? See that minus one slow? That's what that was. The dodge has gone down minus one because of slow effect. So a minus one penalty to the reflexes. So again, while yes it's still a 25 as far as everyone's concerned, I consider it a 26 because I slowed them first. See what I'm saying? And again, we have a lot of spells that are going to entangle and therefore screw over their reflex saves, which is awesome. Of course, we can do damaging spells too. Nice spells like Fireball. Boom. And remember, we have a bonus to those checks for those guys. Fireball spell, 24. It's lower, 
Why is it lower? Because it's fire, not transformation, right? So level three version spell, 10 and three, seven is uh, for my charisma, puts it at 20, two more from fire, makes it 22, two more from my toggle, makes it 24. And again, I could push that five points higher to 29. A solid, solid damaging spell, right? So again, we have plenty of options. Don't think that you're screwed by any stretch of the imagination compared to the Abyssal guy. I only want to show you a couple more quick ones, like our Obsidian Flow. It's an amazing spell for you. It's one of the best ones we have for the uh, Souls Tar Pool for, from straight up uh, DC checks through the goddamn heroes. But I want to showcase them in the best possible light, which means getting everybody in a nice tight cluster. I was like, successful yay. in my search. All right, now we're going to do something like... Where's tar pool? Uh, no city pool. Here we go. Like, yeah, remember, you don't want to be in it. Even if you're immune to fire, you don't want to be in this one because it's really, really nasty. So fire just outside your range. Okay. Just obliterated them. But let's check the check. So where are we at? City and flow check. 29. Also, something else to show you here in a second, but check out the 29. So follow the math. 10, level spell is 4, so 14, plus 7 for my charisma, 21. 4 from transmutation puts it at 25. 2 from the fire bonuses we have puts it at 27, and then our toggle makes it a solid 29. <laughs> and I can have that 5 points higher guaranteed minimum, if not more. So it could be a 34 from a level 4 spell. That's a solid DC check in my opinion. So, that's that one. Now, notice the initial damage, and again, if they had survived, which they didn't, but if they had, even if they made their check, or if they failed their check, but survived, they'd be entangled, just like a web spell. It's an instantaneous web spell. What do I mean by that? Web spell normally persists, right? As you see, you can walk in and out of the damn thing because you're immune, but if they walk into it, even after you cast it, poof, they get caught in the web. Sometimes they still do the check, right? is an instantaneous web spell in that it entangles them in initially. If they make that first check, they're not entangled anymore, but they are slow because this is a slow moving, uh, difficult terrain. You don't see it because again, you have wings on. So again, we're immune to this part of the spell. Uh, we are not immune, by the way, if someone knocks us down, let's say, no, grease spell's a bad example because we're immune to that too, but if someone used something that would knock us prone, we would take damage because this is sharp glass, obsidian glass here. It's only like 1d6. But it's, it's only once as you fall. If you stand back up and fall again, again, you'd probably take 1d6 of damage. So there's that. But it's not that big a deal. To uh, it is there, though. Know that part. Uh, other than that, though, the, the part I wanted to uh, mention was uh, it is slower for everybody else, including your team. So I can show this to you if we find another bad guy and lead him Defeat into the mess. Not an option. Like so. So we just skirt them all the way back here. Watch how slow he moves once he hits the pile. Ready? Uh, see that? That's the difficult terrain. Oh, and again, they have it. I don't. Clearly not a problem for me. And it's not because I have Expeditious Retreat on. It's because I have those wings on. I'm telling you. So again, amazing immunity to some of the effects of your spells. Weirdly, we are not going to be immune to that effect. It's also there for Tar Pool. We're not going to be immune to the effect of it, though. And I don't know why. Um... The only thing that makes sense to me is uh, that tar pool does damage guaranteed if you're standing in it because of the extra heat of the tar. Like it, it persists over time, so it's like 2d6 of fire every round. So there's the initial 10d6 of damage, and then there's like 2d6 of damage every round thereafter if you're stuck in the tar. Somehow we get stuck in it every time, so I don't know why we're not immune to that one, but you're not. So be careful of that shit. It's still okay, and it's still fun to use, but I'm just saying. And it's going to hit like a brick shit house, just like this one, even better, because remember, it's two levels higher. It still gets the fire bonus, plus two, and it gets the transmutation bonus, plus four. So even without casting the spell, I can tell you what the DC check is going to be, because it's going to be 10 plus 6 for the level of the spell, 16, plus 7 for my charisma, 23, plus 4 from transmutation, 27 plus 2 from fire 29 and then my toggles on 31 that's a nice solid hitting spell i'm just saying yes that's the highest i have uh disintegrate will be too lower than that it'll be 29 uh sirocco will be too lower than this uh, because it's uh, fire not transmutation so 29 jumps down to 27 but still a solid solid dc check and again fits the same size as obsidian flow and 
tar pool. So a common thing for me is to go like yay. Because I know they're going to be moving slow in that obsidian flow mess, more likely than not. So just stand outside of it and watch them slowly crawl through this uh, whirly dervish of fire. They're just constantly taking damage and moving slower and slower every step they take. And finally they fall down and just continue to take damage until they die. An amazing spell. And again, you can see the check on that one. Fortitude save, by the way. And again, 27, like I said. Not 29, not 31, like the best one. Not 29 like this one, but 27. Uh, a solid 27. And again, could be higher. But again, 27 is still a solid, solid number for a DC check. So again, I don't have to go through all these things. Uh, I do want to do the dragon one to show you the dragon breath. Uh, and then it will probably call the video quits. You already know how to do the sneak attack damage and silly stuff like that. You already know how to set that stuff up. Uh, but don't ever forget you got that preaching attack when you really need to instantly kill something. Like, let's actually just do the disintegrate on someone just because you know you want to see it. Here, let's pick this doofus. He's giving me the sly eye, stank eye. Uh, let's do preaching attack. And then we're going to do disintegrate. Oh, Is that the loser? Oh my god, that was just so painful. 40d6 times 2 it did double damage because I critted on it. Son of a bitch, that's awesome. Crit hip. He was flat footed, not surprising, uh, because we did the preaching attack. So his armor was literally 11, guys. And yes, we don't have a lot of going for us for bonus here to swing. I'll grant you. But for a touch attack, that's flat footed. This is going to be a reasonably common number for you to hit. Maybe 11, maybe a little more, 14 or so. Because other stuff uh, isn't counted in flat-footed or touch armor. Like deflection, for instance, I think falls into this category as well. So they could have had a little more protection than that. But not much more. And we still have a die roll of 1d20 to add to our 15, 18, whatever the hell we had there. So again, pretty nice. Now notice, boom, we killed the guy. And of course the fart cloud goes off for their dazzling display slash intimidating from dreadful carnage, right? That's the penalty. So again, see the guy with a little weird ass uh, halo around him a little bit? It's kind of hard to make it out, but it's definitely there in a light tan color compared to this guy who has nothing. This guy also looks like he has nothing. So I'm betting that he doesn't have a penalty on him. He definitely does. So let's kill Do this dude first. You can see the shimmer on his body, right? So that guy, let's show you the swing. He had nothing penalizing his armor class. Okay, We had a size penalty for being big, but a bonus to our strength for being big as well. Greater heroism, power attack, and blah, 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 blah. Now, we definitely scared the shit out of this guy by that point. Now let's swing him. And again, this guy's not dead. And again, flat-footed. No, it doesn't show a penalty per se, but when he says flat-footed, you know that he was scared of you. That's because of shattered defenses, right? And again, if I had sense vitals... This one here on me already. That would have been sneak attack damage guaranteed. And I didn't have a teammate with me. He was already just because he was scared of me. It was going to be sneak attack. So it's just like I said. It's going to be beautiful. Well, let's show you. Uh, what did I say? I was going to show you. Oh, the dragon breath. Let's show you that. And then I suppose we can call it quits. That is quite a discovery. Yep. Sure is quite the discovery. We Ooh, will spitters. I like spitters. Okay, get in the corner. We're going to change into a dragon. Now, the question is what dragon to change into. It doesn't matter. And here's why. Because if I pick the fire dragon, as I'll show you. Remember, we have the fire elemental bonus, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't give us that plus two bonus for our fire breath, which sucks ass in my opinion. What? Let get away from these guys. Let's go hit this doofus. With a fire attack. Remember, the fire's up here. You only get one. Because your uh, Dragon Kind 1. Dragon Kind 2 seems to get infinite castings of this. It may need time to recharge, but it doesn't seem to do anything as far as one and done like this guy is. So this will be my only fire breath. Alright, now let's check the saving throw on that fire breath. 29. Follow the math. It's a level 6 spell. I know it's not a spell that casts the breath, but it's a spell that turned us into this form. So I assume it's level 6. So 10 plus 6, 16. Plus 7 for my charisma makes it 23. My toggle's on, 23 jumps to 25. Four more points, thanks to transmutation and the uh, school power, puts me at 29. Nothing putting it to 31. So again, we don't have the fire, the elemental focus, and greater elemental focus. And how do I know that? Because I've tried it in the other forms, it's still a 29. 
So if it's acid breath, if it's cold breath, if it's electric breath, it's the same number. So it really is transmutation and your toggle still take hold, but that's it. No elemental focus, just so you know that information, because it is important, and I don't want you having a number going, well, I thought that'd be awesome. Yeah, so did I, buddy. So did I. Um, but really, other than that, the fact that you can cast spells in this form, in my opinion, is still baller. And, of course, you can still sneak attack in this form, as weird as it is to say. Dreadful Carnage and everything else besides. Remember, all you have to do is die in your hand. You don't have to have a, a power attack and weapon, uh, uh, or sorry, a weapon focus to use Dreadful Carnage. You needed a weapon focus to unlock all that shit, but you didn't need it to do the Dreadful Carnage. Like I said, it can be from a spell, a claw. As long as it dies at your hands, so to speak, uh, then Dreadful Carnage is going to go off. It's the fuck cloud you see every time somebody dies. And again, with five attacks, with sneak attack at 5d6, with the bonuses to your stats and size, because you're in dragon form, you're telling me you can't tear up some shit in dragon form? I know you can. Now, weirdly, uh, just a, a point, of course, that size enlarged person bonus, polymorph dragon kind bonus, con dragon kind bonus, dex is a size penalty, that doesn't matter. Uh, but notice, again, you're not seeing the minus one to your size penalty for your attack because you're human-sized dragon. I know, man, it's funny as hell. Same with your armor. You'll notice that you don't have the minus one. Yes, your armor sucks, which is why you should have mage armor to cast on yourself or someone else to do it for you. So, you know, just know that because our armor is garbage right now. But for this low-level trash, I knew I'd be fine. Uh, but also notice that we can still, because we can cast spells, you can do the transformation spell, the one where you're a fighter, which I think is as funny as hell. Notice your spells go dark. Notice that your attack bonus jumps through the roof to a solid plus 20 for base attack bonus, and then we still have any buffs besides. And again, like I said, see the power attack? Minus 6, which means for a normal swing, that's uh, plus 12 damage. For a two-handed swing like we normally do, that would be a plus 18 damage with that Bardiche, man. Just saying. That shit's awesome. And, of course, because we don't have a belt of strength, dex, and con, you see we get a plus four to each of those from thanks to transformation enhancement. They won't stack with the belt. But I just thought it was funny that we get them all. So we have a better strength, better dex, and a better con than normal right now. Our fortitude is amazeballs right now. And we even got, like, plus four natural armor from transformation just like dragon kind. Natural armor enhancement is not the same thing. Natural armor is different. They stack. Natural armor enhancement does not. Natural armor enhancement was like for genie kind form which we didn't show you or um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, oh, the, the bark skin is natural armor enhancement or the necklace uh, of uh, amulet I should say of natural armor that's a natural armor enhancement. Those don't stack. It's whichever is the best. Again the reason I like genie kind is because even though it's only plus four in the necklaces you know plus one plus two all the way up to like plus five or plus six so clearly that's the better necklace slot but if i really need a better necklace uh piece of jewelry for some specific fight i can take that plus five or plus six natural armor necklace off can uh, cancel the penalty somewhat by turning into genie kind where i can still cast spells and i still get a plus four to my natural armor enhancement so again i think you'll like the build guys uh now before we finish i know i keep saying this but before we finish just a, a last minute how do i compare this to the epistle the build that i've already given you guys like the first build that started this mess well uh, it's definitely solid uh I, if i were to compare them apples to apples uh, i still say that i like this one better than the epistle having said that there's plenty of reasons to still like the Abyssal form. The Abyssal form is just mean. I mean, you can't really argue with a 22 base strength bonus. That's huge. Yes, he started with 16, and he got 6 more points for free. I could have pushed it even more if I would have tweaked the build a little bit, but again, I probably wouldn't have been quite as happy with it. And he had stuff that I don't have. So that cleaving finish, the improved cleaving finish. So literally, when he kills a guy... If they're within range of that big-ass glaive that he had, what was he doing? He was slapping the next guy in the head and slapping the next guy in the head. It just never stopped because he had great cleave, improved cleave, improved cleaving finish, and whatever the hell else you could call him. So it was literally, if a, if a guy dies and someone else was within range, he'd swing at that dude. If that guy died and someone else was within range, he'd swing at another dude. He could literally ginsu the shit out of everyone 
just because he killed one guy and it just never stops because everyone else was so weak to him he just killed that guy and then killed that guy and then killed that guy all in one combat round so that dude's definitely uber but I still maintain especially since we get sense vitals at like 9 and he gets it maybe if he picked it up at 19 we're definitely better than him from 9 to 19 so I totally feel that this build is going to be one that you would enjoy. But with that, that's everything I wanted to show you guys. My name is Brother Moon. Please like, subscribe, comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. I'll see you guys soon. Bye now.